Welcome back to Cheddar Climate, the fight for change. As wildfires grow worse every year, destroying millions of acres of land in the U.S. alone, one company aims to make it easier than ever to replant trees using drone technology. Drone Seed combines automation, drone technology, and biotechnology to solve the complex issue of reforestation. So joining us now is Grant Canary, CEO of Drone Seed. Grant, thank you so much for being here. I wonder if in your own words, you can tell us about the Drone Seed mission and really how the idea came about. Sure. The mission is to make reforestation scalable and mitigate the worst effects of climate change. And that's how we've recruited everybody on the team. And then as far as kind of where we're focusing is uh, post wildfire impacts and land managers, whether they're tribal nations, nonprofits, timber companies, small family forests, or state and federal lands, how do we reforest each and every year what we've lost? And the, the major takeaway here is that similar to coral, similar to glaciers, folks intuitively know that forests are in trouble, but we're starting to see the data that forests are in exponential decline because of the size of the fires and because of the moderate to high severity, which is uh, basically eliminating seed in the soil and eliminating seed in the tops of the trees. So that's really where we're focused is how do we reforest each and every year what we've lost? And key, key to that is seed. Nothing happens without seed and thus the acquisition of silver seed. Yeah, before we get into kind of the drone technology, just how cool it is, we're looking at some amazing video there of what you guys do. Um, I just w wonder if you can hone in on just how critical reforestation is. And to your point, given the size and scale of the fires that we are seeing nowadays. Yeah, so uh, 20 years ago, the 10 year rolling average for how much burned was around 2 million acres a year. Uh, 2018, we're looking at 7 million acres a year, and that's the 10-year rolling average. So for to contextualize that for folks, um, that's, uh, that is uh, seven times the largest timber company in the world, uh, and that is a lot of land that is cut uh, uh, each and every year. Um, sorry, cut, is, but we're utilizing the analogy with um, timber, but that is, a lot, that is the land that is burned. Wow. I thank you so much for kind of breaking that down. I just wanted to give people an understanding of the importance of this kind of solution here. Let's get into the drone, the tech itself. How does it work? How do you determine the best areas to reseed? Yeah, so we it's a three step process. Um, first step, we go out there and survey it um, with this. This is a, a small aircraft with a LIDAR and multispectral camera. This is the same technology used for self driving cars. We want to create a 3D terrain map. Uh, don't send the drones into trees, don't send them into two inch branches, and then also unprecedented level of data for foresters. Um, we utilize that data to rule out areas in the second step of the process of basically make sure we don't drop seed vessels, as you're seeing on the screen here, uh, in places where they won't grow, blackberry patches, gravel roads, um, along those lines. Third step in the process, that's where the big efforts happen. These are not your consumer drones. They're about eight feet in diameter. They carry a 57 pound payload and they're operating in groups of up to three to five. And so we're dropping a seed vessel in those pre-selected precision areas uh, where they'll have the best chance of being able to actually survive and establish uh, very similar to how nature approaches it. Just so cool to just see how tech can solve some of these problems that we're dealing with. I want to get into, you know, just how big of an area can um, these drones survey and seed and, and how long does this process actually take? Yeah, so we try and get into uh, post fire areas within 90 to 180 days of a fire before the weeds have taken hold. Uh, that is really important. It's not been a, a possibility for foresters in the past to be able to do that. And so we're providing that. Um, and then where we can operate is pretty much every state west of Colorado. Uh, we are F the first and only that is FAA approved, including in Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, and then we operate all along the West Coast, uh, California, Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, and Idaho. Um, and we're uh, also operating in New Zealand and Australia. So we are operating in a lot of places um, and really seeking to make that big impact post wildfire. Yeah, you kind of touched on it there, but I wonder where exactly have you kind of pursued these reforestation projects so far? Yeah, so uh, Southern Oregon, big fires there, um, where, which is my home state, uh, and then also Eastern Washington, uh, and then working with having a lot of conversations, there's skyrocketing demand with last year's huge fire season, 2018. Nurseries are incredibly backlogged 
Um, and so the ability to reforest faster, that's where we're focusing. So having conversations in California as well. We can't give out individual customer names uh, and locations, but that's, uh, the, that is kind of the, the breadth. Of, if there's a large fire, we are, we are having conversations and encourage folks to have conversations with us. But how do we, how do we work you through those four immediate questions of post wildfire of where does the seed come from? Uh, how do I navigate the terrain? Um, if you're going seedlings, uh, where can I get the capacity from the nursery? And then how do I pay for it? And we utilize carbon credits. I got to imagine there's some personal gratification to be able to utilize um, this solution in your home state and be able to help with, with the problems, obviously, um, that state's dealing with and a lot of other states around the country. Uh, we understand you recently acquired Silva Seed, uh, the largest private forestry seed supplier in the western U.S. How does that, this acquisition actually benefit drone seed? Yeah, so nothing happens without seed. And so we've built up a supply chain that relies on orchards. Well, it takes 20 to 40 years to spin up an orchard. And so with the exponential increase in wildfire, the supply chain is way behind. There was a paper that came out, scientific paper. It was trumpeted on Nature Conservancy's blog, American Forests and others. We need a 6X seed collection from the wild to be able to really step in because we're seeing nature do less and less of the natural regeneration. Um, the size of the severity of those fires, nature, those seed stores in the soil and the tops of the trees, it's doing less and less of the work. And so without human intervention going out there and mimicking what nature was doing uh, by dropping seed vessels and putting that seed supply out there, yeah. uh, we are going to see an exponential decline in forests. And nature doesn't do a vacuum, so we'll see 10 vital bushes, but not great for uh, the carbon capture that we need to mitigate the worst effects of climate change. So Silva Seed allows us to, one, uh, be able to collect seed from the wild and process it. We're the largest uh, private seed bank on the West Coast. Uh, and then also we're growing millions of seedlings. We don't give out exact numbers, but we're doubling capacity for both of those aspects. And we have growing capacity that many nursery uh, nurseries that we're aware of, not, not even taking orders till 2024 because it's so backed up. Wow. Great stuff that you guys are doing, obviously well needed. And again, just so fascinating to see how technology uh, can provide just an amazing solution to the climate crisis that we're dealing with. Thanks again, Grant Canary, CEO of Drone Seed.